Meantime, uh, Mark Hurd isn't the only pro high profile executive who left his post recently. Let's uh, talk to the CEO here of advisory firm Hydric and Struggles, Kevin Kelly, about how many companies are prepared out there and how many are not. We saw Twitter come out with their backup plan, Skype came out and announced their changing of the guard there. NBC still, you know, it came out a little bit later. How many companies are actually prepared and what's the cost if you don't have a designated successor clearly articulated to the market? Well, I think uh, what's staggering in our research has shown recently that only 40% of organizations today actually have a true succession plan in place, uh, which is pretty staggering if you think about it. And you just named a few examples. Yes. Uh, and what's remarkable is even given shareholders today focus on succession plans and organizations, board of directors only spend roughly two hours a year focused on succession planning. So why? Why is it that way? Why not have the you know backup plan ready to go should the unthinkable happen or should someone have to be asked to step down like with Mark Hurd? Well, it used to be, you know, if you think about it, CEOs were dealing with their own mortality and no one thinks they're going to get hit by the proverbial bus the next day. But uh, we have gotten better, but we're just not quite there yet. But now there's more pressure externally to make sure that we're focused on that. So talk to me about what you're seeing in the job market right now. Meredith Whitney came out with a hard number that got a lot of people's attention saying expect about 80,000 job cuts in financial sector. Is that something you're seeing? Well, not quite yet. And you know, what we've seen this year is actually a growth in terms of recruiting, particularly at the senior level. And most of that driven by pent up demand from 2009. So the C-suite spots are coming open. They are, more so than last year. There was somewhat of a, um, a freeze, if you will, on executive hiring but uh, it has opened up, uh, particularly in sectors such as technology and life sciences, alternative and re renewable energies. Uh, so yes, there are uh, openings at the executive level. And simultaneously, uh, firms are using this as a once-in-a-lifetime once opportunity to attract top talent. What are the pay packages like? How different are they now in this environment? Well, it's I think Woody Allen said that 90% uh, of success is just showing up and uh, you're no longer seeing a pay for pulse, if you will. <laughs> Compensation packages are more tied to performance, uh, probably more so than ever than we've seen. To uh, stock sure. performance or to not to stock performance per se. Uh, mostly things that the CEO can control. You know whether it's EBITDA, whether it's return on invested capital. So, what are those levers the CEO can control and tying their performance to those metrics based on you know not options but RSUs. We're seeing the trend move away from options to more uh, RSU-based compensation. Uh, it scared a lot of people this idea that um, those who have been sort of middle managers might not have a career, particularly if you're over 50 because of the recession. Is there a market there for for those middle level executives? There is. I mean, there, there's always a market for talented people. I mean, whether it's we're seeing the advent of uh, international firms look at expanding in, in North America, be they Indian firms, Chinese mm -hmm. firms, etc., and using this as an opportunity to capture market share. It's a matter, a matter of how flexible these candidates are and, you know, yeah. the supply demand issue that we're facing today. All right. Uh, Kevin Kelly, CEO of Hydric and Struggle on somewhat of a brighter note in a jobs week. So uh, good to end the conversation right there.